folks tonight I'm going to do a little bit of a tutorial another sort of getting started tutorial with uh, InDesign and this is the 2015 CC 2015 version I've done another popular video that's an older version but let's just jump right in as I always like to do I'm going to say file new document and I am using as far as the view goes up here I'm using the essentials view that's why you're seeing all this stuff over here if your screen doesn't look like that this I'll just go ahead and show you this in a second but let me go ahead and for right now, I'm going to do a one page. Let's say we're going to do a magazine layout tonight. I'm going to use some of my photos. So I'm going to turn this facing pages off. In other words, I'm not doing two pages that face each other. I'm not doing a book. I'm just doing one page that might be in a magazine or something. And right now, I have this set at letter size, which is 8.5 by 11. It comes up as pikas or whatever you call these things here. I always hate these. Uh, but, but rest assured, this is 8.5 by 11. If you wanted to be sure of that, you could type in 8.5 inches. Uh, by 11, 1, 1, and put the inch thing there, tab, and you'll see it converts back to what you had before. So you've got 8.5 by 11 here. I'm going to click OK. And now we just have a plain old blank page. This is uh, assuming you don't know anything about InDesign. And you know, we're going to go through some advanced things as we move forward. I just want to get you started fast for those people that want to get started fast. First of all, I want to mention the layout here. You go up under Window, you go to Workspace, and there are different ones. I think most people it's going to come up, I think, by default as Essentials. So Essentials is okay. It really it's the same thing in different ways. There's there are ways you can you can pull these tabs around and put them in where you want to. I'm not going to get into that. We're not going to try to bore you that stuff. We're just going to get to work. So let's say I want to do a magazine layout for, I don't know, something about the Linville Gorge. I guess I've got a lot of photos for Linville Gorge. I could pull this up. So I've got, gone through and I've pulled some of my photos and stuff down. These are some of my personal photos. Uh, okay, so different things. We might use these trees and then go ahead and download this as well. And I'll say show in folder. And so I have that and I have a folder off screen over here on the other side that you can't see. But I'm going to go ahead and so I have about four photos I'm going to use maybe for this. So uh, what you do right off the bat, this T over here is how you do text. And you got to make a text box because right now there's nothing but some guidelines on this whole page. So I'm going to click on this T. Then I'm going to go over here, I'm going to get up in kind of this corner here and snap to that. And I'm going to, I think for purposes of this, I'm just going to put a, uh, a title all the way across this. And I'm going to say, uh, this, is, uh, this is actually some of the photos I got are not the Linville Gorge there. It's just Burke County. So I'm going to say, let's do this all caps maybe. T-H-E-B-E-A-U-T-Y -E of B-U-R-K-E-C-O-U-N-T-Y. And so, okay, now I've got just some text in here. If it's going to be a header, I probably need it to be bigger than that, right? So up here is where you control that, your font size. You can click these little arrows up. I think you might be able to drag. No, you can't. In Photoshop, you can actually drag on this. But here you have to actually click the little up arrows, or you can just highlight over this like that and say 28 or whatever. And I think I even want to go wider than that, so I'm just going to bump it up where it almost takes the whole thing. And I think by default this is Minion Pro. And, you know, that doesn't bother me. Let's just leave it Minion Pro for now. I think that's okay. I might want this Y to come all the way out to the edge. I could say 35.25 or something like that if I want to. Or I could just go over here and click that just one time. And that looks like it's pretty good. So you see you can actually scale the width of a font here. So uh, it went to 101%. It fills the whole thing up. Now, it's not this black background here just means it's highlighted. If you click over here, this is the selection tool. Sometimes I'll just click on that to get off of it. And you'll see you just have a, a black uh, thing here. Now these lines, these blue lines that show up, they're not really there. If you go over here to the view, I say I preview, uh, you click on that and you can see what you've got. You see you've got just a page with white and you go back to normal and there you got, and you can see your guidelines. And that's helpful most of the time to have your guidelines. So let's say we want some sort of a sub heading underneath this. I don't know what, what it might be, but let's maybe we put a subheading under this and it just kind of hangs over here. Maybe this needs to be a sans serif font, but let's go ahead and type in what that subheading might be. Um, and I'm going to not, not do it. I'm, I'm going to say, uh, the, uh, I'll say, okay, let's do this. Let's take it off of caps and I'll say uh, this Western NC County has much more, or say offers much more. Let's do that. I should have highlighted this maybe. Okay. Let's capitalize Western here. 
And like I say, you know, I think I might want sans serif on this, so I might go something like Myriad. And what you do is click up here, and now you've got, you click this down button, and you got all your different fonts, right? If you, and it gives you little samples of what they're going to look like. So you can get to all those fonts over here. Or since I know that I like Myriad, and I know that it's sans serif, I'm just going to type M-Y-R. And here I've got Myriad Pro, regular maybe. And yeah, it might be good. I might go a little bit bigger than that since it's going to be a bit of a header. And might want to be a little bit wider than even that. And I guess that is a complete sentence. So I should put a sentence uh, period there, shouldn't Let's go up to uh, 14 points maybe. I guess that's about right. And then let's do uh, maybe a byline or something here too, right? I'm going to go down just a little bit with this. So since this is Tony Lee Glenn writing this, uh, we could say, once again, I'm going to try to do something kind of what I might see in a, um, in a magazine. Let's say buy. And a lot of times they'll actually capitalize the, uh, I'll ha hit my cap lock again, Tony Lee, I-G-L-E-N-N. -N. And then we'll say a photography. Let's go back down to, uh, I'm going to go lowercase again. And we'll say by TLG. Okay, there we go. So, once again, uh, I think I might make this uh, sans serif. Let's see, Myriad. M-Y-R-I-D. Myriad Pro. Regular. Now we could set up uh, styles for this too. Now it might be a good thing. You know, this might be a good time to show you that, how this would work. Now also, in between things like this, sometimes I like to do, you can do um, the Alt and the 8, and it puts a dot there. So Alt 8 is pretty cool. It just gives you kind of a, uh, of a you know, bullet point type thing. So let's say that I want this to be a style. Now, do you need styles? You don't have to use them, but they're very handy. Let's say you want to do this page, just the same layout for 50 pages in a magazine, right? 50 different articles. So you might want to think about doing a style, and you have this style panel over here. You click on it, and it pulls up, and you can see there's no style here right now. Well, here's the way I typically do these. Like, let's go ahead and make a few styles. Let's, call, let's just highlight any bit of this, really. And we go over here. Once this is highlighted, you go click New here. And you got character style one, and you double click on it. Uh oh, uh oh, click, uh, click on that. You double click in the blue, then you'll see it, it actually tells you it's 35 points of the 101. So it actually has, has gone ahead and it's made this a style. And we could call this a uh, big page top header. Okay, boom. Now you've got this style that you can uh, use going on, and then we might use this to be your subheader. So I can really just highlight any bit of it, right? I'm highlighting using the text tool here. Click New again, and here's another one. I can double click, and I can see, yep, there it's done my 14 point Myriad Pro. And I could call this a subheader. Okay. Boom. And I can call this, uh, this, this, this little buy here. Uh, and we'll just call this, um, I don't know what we'll call this, to make it a style though. We'll call this byline, I guess. Now I can just go here, I think, hit rename. No, I guess you have to do it. Hang on. So I'll call this byline. Ah. And I'll call this serif. And the serif means that it's it's not a, you know, it does have serif, it's got little hangy downs and uh, little loopy things on the bottoms of the G. A sans serif would not have that. Uh, you know, the T curls up underneath it. So, and but but now the rest of this, like this, this is the whole reason I started doing style, is this is going to be a sans serif, right? So I'm going to do this. I'll call this byline, B-Y-L-I-N-E, uh, sans serif. I will not sam serif. Okay. So now what I've got, if I go over here and click TLG, I can just go click on byline sans serif, and that makes it, it makes it into it. And what's more, like say I wanted the byline sans serif to be bold from now on or whatever. I can go in here, basic character formats. Yeah, if I want to say font style, I want it to be semi-bold, I can say OK here, and it changes it both here and here. I think I'm going to undo that. But see, that's, that's kind of cool. Let's see if it actually took. Um, character formats, yes, yeah, so I guess I'm not bold anymore. But see, that's the powerful thing of this is if I wanted to make a, uh, say my editor came to me and said, you know what, I like that byline, that byline ought to be blue. You can go change it here and it would change it on as many pages as you have here, just like it would if you're doing CSS you know, or cascading style sheets in a uh, web page. 
So now we have a byline, and I could have put these all in the same text box. I'm doing them separately, though. I just kind of the way I do it, because I like to visually look at things and see how they're spaced. That looks pretty good to me. I'm going to go back to the standard view. Once again, I'm clicking this little thing here for preview and normal. And so anyway, let's go ahead and start putting some text on this page. So I have not written anything, my bad, about this. I'm, I mean, I've not written anything to be uh, the, uh, the text in this. And, you know, I've not even thought about how many columns I might want this to be. And you see here, this is, even though this is 8.5 by 11 pages, you still got pikas here. A lot of times when I'm doing these, I, I, I like to think in terms of inches better. So I might go to Edit and Preferences. So I'm jumping around just a little bit here, but I want you to see how this is done. And you might go here to Units and Increments. And when it comes up, you can tell it horizontal, no, I don't want pie because I want inches. Vertical, no, I don't want pie because I want inches. And say OK, and boom, now you've got inches up here. You can see you got eight and a half inches. So, you know, I could say, I could say here now, OK, I want to fix me some columns. Now, what I did, I drew a box that I thought looked like about a third of, a, of, a, of this thing here. See, Control V. Now, I could mathematically figure this out. I'm just going to try to play with it and see, though, Control V. So I probably made that too wide. I'm not going to be able to get three of them in. So I, I've not done a real good job here, folks. I should be doing this mathematically. Let's just do this. And I'm going to say Control-C, Control-V. I'm trying to eyeball it. And Control-V. Control-C and Control-V. Control-C is to copy. Control-V is to paste. Now you see here I've got three columns. And this is going to make me happy, except that this column, there's too much space and this column's not. So I'd like to have them spaced equally. So I'm going to kind of just like draw a box over all of them here, and you can either use the selector. I think the selector tool is what works best. This is the selector tool. This is direct select, and I'll show you what this does later. But this is the one that just you typically use 99% of the time uh, just to select boxes and stuff. So we're going to go over, here, go over here to align. You see this over here? And so I'm going to say align, and I'm going to distribute these things evenly, I think. So I think I da, 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 distribute evenly. That did it. Now this one right here is distributed evenly uh, to the horizontal center. So there we go. We have them all three. So I've got a three-column layout here now. And I don't have any text, so I'm going to do something that a lot of people do when they're cheating and they're just mocking something up, right? Uh, correct is what I'm saying. I'm going to type in, uh, so here I'm at Google, and I'm going to type in Greek text. A lot of your uh, graphic design people, and myself included, will go here and we'll get some lorem ipsum, and this is just a uh, this is just text that you can use. It's the old Greek text. Here, generate lorem ipsum. There we go. Boom. Now we got it. This is what we're looking for. So you can go get this anywhere. It looks like it's copying a bunch of other crap, like all these spaces out here beside it. I don't like that. Let's see if this works. I might be wasting our time here, folks. Don't want to do that. Control V. No, it works just fine. So let's say I've got a paragraph and it ends here. And let's say I've got another paragraph and it's going to end, I don't know, right here about ten, tens and done or whatever that is. So I've got a few paragraphs here. And I've got a bunch more text that I want to go on into these other paragraphs, right? So how do you get that text to go there? Well, if you got the, uh, the you go up here to selection again and you see it in this little red box here, click on that. And then you go up here to the top and click that, and it flows it, right? Same thing will work here. You click this one and go up here, and it flows it to there. Pretty sweet. So we're going to put some pictures and stuff on this page here in a minute. But a lot of what you'll see um, when you're doing um, paragraphs and things, you'll see like a drop, a big like drop L here for this lorem. So let's say we want this first paragraph. I'm going to click on this, and, and I could set up a paragraph style over here. I might do it in a minute. But I do want a big drop cap. Here is your drop cap, this thing right here. See it? So I'm going to click up, up, up. Let's do about four lines. Yeah, four lines looks good. And I guess I'll leave it this big serif here. So I've got a drop cap uh, first paragraph. But I'd like for the rest of these paragraphs to indent. So I'm going to select the rest of these. So the paragraph indent is right here where it shows this little arrow. This one here slides everything over, but this slides in just the first you know, few um, letters or so. Let's say we go three, about three spaces there for a paragraph. So now we have all these paragraphs set. If I go back up here, we can pull these things together so they're not they're not hanging like that. I'm just doing a backspace, clicking in there and hitting the backspace. So now wherever we, if we decide we want to fuse to fuse libero here to be a paragraph, there we click it and we've got that. So that's looking pretty decent. So now let's say 
Okay, well, you know what, Tony, that, that text is just a little bit big. Let's go ahead and make this, I'll make all this just a little bit smaller, I think. Let's go to 11 for this. And so we probably need some more text here. Control C. I don't know, might not even need it. But we got the text if we need it. So now we've got lots of fake text. We might do some pull quotes here in a minute or something too. But first thing, let's bring a picture into this. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to say that here, I'm going to have to do about a two column photo right here. And it's going to be one of my photos that I pulled just a while ago. So right now this picture box, first of all, I should say this is the picture box with the X in it, the rectangle frame. And once you've pulled that in, you can uh, place, file place. Control D is what I always do. So I never even think to actually go here and look for it, but it is in here. So I usually just do a Control D. So here on my, on my desktop, I have a thing called Images for Tutorials. And I think I'll go ahead and pull probably this one of the chimneys up at the Linville Gorge in first. So we'll say, let me pull this down a little bit. It's not so big. We'll say Open. So now I've got an image in here. I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to say Fitting. I'm going to say Fit Content Proportionally. And so there we go. we got the content in there. And now we'll talk about this other tool for just a minute, okay? So you see here, I've got the, the blue bounds of my box here. You can see some text behind it up here. If I zoom in, you can see this. See there's some text behind there. Well, okay, I don't, I, I, I actually want this picture to come up in this. I could do a couple things. I could pull this frame down like this and I could do that and that would fix the problem. Or you know what, I've got, let's, see, let's, let's pull this box up a little bit so that there's just not all of the picture is revealed, okay? I'm gonna do a control zero Control zero is just going to bring you back to a normal view. And you see you've got this view up here. You can go to 100% if you want to, or you can go to 50% or whatever. But so right now, I do have uh, less of the picture in here than what is actually there. If I pull this down, there's more picture there than I'm seeing. I'm doing this purposefully just to show you how you can crop a photo in InDesign. So click this gray button here, this direct select, and you can click on, the, on this. When you click on this, you're actually clicking what's inside the box. Not the box, but what's inside it. So if I hit the arrow up key now, I can do this. And I can crop that picture, right? Or conversely, if I want to zoom in on it a little bit, I can go down here and I can grab this corner and hold my shift key down. If you hold your shift key down, it does it proportionally. You, you can't go outside of proportion. And I could do this kind of thing. Now I'm using my arrow key to go up again. I can zoom in on that. So say that's the portion of the image that I want you to see right there. And there's pictures on the outside of where, the, where this brown line is here. The picture actually exists there, but I just want to show this much. So now, Tony, we've got uh, text that's underneath this picture, right? So we probably want to do some run around on this picture or text wrap or whatever you call it. I'm going to click on the picture. I've got this, this button selection tool highlighted. And so I'm going to click up here for the wraparound uh, box. And so boom, suddenly it, ha it has wrapped all that text down. And if I pull this image up, the text comes up. You see fa Facilellus here or whatever comes down. So there we go. But you know what? It's riding awfully close to that picture, isn't it? So we can go in here and we can make some edits to the way that that works. So I'm going to go over here to the windows. I'm going to go to text wrap and it pulls up in the text wrap uh, dialog box over here. So now I have more controls than what I have here. I can actually control some of this stuff. I can see I don't, I don't need to create margin over here to the left or right. I'm cool with that. Okay, so I, so I click on this, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn this off. I don't wanna make all these the same. In other words, I don't wanna create, uh, I don't wanna create all the way around wrap. I just wanna wrap the bottom of this one. So there I did like about two clicks, and that looks pretty good. That's about what I'm looking for there. So I'm going to put, let's do something a little different here. Let's put another uh, picture box maybe right in here. So this is going to be a little bit odd, I know. But I've seen this in magazines before where they'll kind of split a column here. Let's put kind of a tall photo in here. And I actually already have text strap on this one uh, by default, kind of where I, I made my picture box there a while ago. And I think I do want the text to go around the whole image this time. So I'm going to do a or the wrap, I mean the word wrap. So I'd put a little bit of extra space there. And if I decide I want more than that, I'll do it later. But right now I'm gonna do, I have this highlighted already. So I'm gonna do a Control D again, Control D. And I think now I'm gonna pick, I don't know, let's pick uh, some of these trees, say open. And that looks kind of cool, let's say fitting. I, I right clicked on the image, fitting, and I say fit content proportionally. Uh-oh, that's, no, I don't wanna do that. Let's say this time, fitting. 
let's say feel, feel frame proportionally. And there we go. Now we've got a proportional photo. I'm going to click on that and see. You can see all the, this is what's on the outside. Maybe I don't like that yellow tree to be the main thing. Maybe I do. The yellow tree is not bad, is it? So I'm just kind of clicking my little buttons left and right here. So now I have a few kind of golden interesting trees there. And if I want to, I want to test that against the outside. Yeah, it's looking decent. You know, it's not terrible. Um, it looks like it's a, it's a little bit funny the way this paragraph is, is laid out down here. I might get rid of that just for the, just so it looks a little bit better for now. Put a period in here. That's my pug snoring, folks, or snorting if you hear that. And you know what? Since I've got kind of some more, what if I put a smaller photo even right in here, too? I'm just doing some weirdness here. Let's just let's try this and see what happens. So I'm going to grab the picture frame again. I want to put another picture right beside this. And this one I might just kind of let hang right along in here. And let's see, I think we've got, let's, see, let's, let's check our, uh, I'm going to turn this off again because I think all I need is the bottom again on this one. So there we go, a little bit of space. And now I can put another picture in, Control D. This I know this is a bit strange, but let's put this waterfall in here. I'll say fitting. I'll say fit, uh, fill frame proportionally. And there we got a little nice little waterfall. I'll use the uh, direct select again here. Now we got our waterfall showing in there. So now we got two pictures kind of side by side. This looks a little strange, <laughs> but you know it's not bad. Now. You know, I, I actually, we, we manipulated this column by uh, putting the picture in and telling it to have a, a, a space. And I'm going to, you can also do it this way, the old fashioned way, just to pull the column down, right? And leave a hole here for like a, uh, a, a an out, a, like a call out box, I would say, or a, or a title box. I'm going to go back to normal view so we can see our guidelines. I'm going to put in the text box right in here. Just draw it in. And so now I'm going to get some lower mips from, from here because this will be our title, and control c and control v Now this one has the paragraph uh, added to it, but I'm going to take that off of this one because this is not a paragraph. This is going to be a little call-out box or a little text thing. I'm going to make this a sans serif. We'll say M white myriad again, myriad pro, PRO, and here we'll go to uh, condensed maybe sometime. I don't know. Why would we just say, let's say regular. Maybe probably regular, but this typically is much smaller. Okay, so okay, then I could, and we could, let's make this usually about like, say, at 8. Now, see, you can do 8.5 if 8 is too small. So say 8.5, and that takes, not a problem. And see how this other stuff that I put in here is, is not right because I didn't have it highlighted? Well, that's okay. Fix that by doing this. Ah, just highlight any part of this. And then go back over your styles again, your character styles, and say new. And we'll call this one. Uh, we'll call this one uh, picture title. Okay, or picture descriptions we could call it. Now I can do a Control A. Control A selects everything, and I can hit picture title, and it does all of it. So now I've got like a little picture title thing here, right? And so these are the titles for the pictures. Pretty cool. So so far so good, and we've got kind of a decent looking layout going on here. I'm going to do a control zero again. Control zero just puts everything out on the page where we can see it. And you know what? Maybe down here I'm just going to pull this up a little bit. Maybe we want to have a um, kind of a little, I don't know, uh, we, we want to tell about who our writer is or something. You know, like Tony Glenn is a famous blah, 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 whatever. You see that kind of thing sometimes in these. So I am going to do a um, maybe another little separate. And you, once again, you can do this inside the same box. But the reason I pulled this up is say you want this to go onto another page this part here, then this could be a separate box and you can just drag this down and connect it to a box on another page, which I can show you how that's done later too. So let's say that I want to say uh, Tony Lee Glenn is a staff writer at Valley Graphics in Valdez NC period. Control A. All right, so now I've got this. And let's say that probably, I don't know, probably that could be an italics. Uh, let's make that not Minion. Well, we leave it Minion Pro. I could leave it Minion Pro. And we go down in size a little bit there. Maybe 10 points for that. And let's, instead, of, instead of regular, let's say uh, italic. And here we go. So you've seen this kind of thing before, I'm sure. 
And uh, let's see, so probably we could save that as a style too. Why not, right? I'll go here and say new, and this could be um, writer credit or is it W R I writer uh, bio. Okay, so now we've got a writer bio style if we need that. And let's see, I could put a separate box or I could put it inside the same box, but let's say I just want to say uh, da 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 da. So I'm going to put a little Linville Gorge info in here, okay? So we'll say, what does it say, Burke County? Uh, L E A R, learn more about B U R K E C O U N T Y N C at uh, V I S I T, let's just do this high, high, let's see, V I S I T B U R K E C O U N T Y dot com, okay? So this probably could be sans serif again. And I do have a sans serif over here. I have a byline, uh, a byline or a byline sans serif. And that's not bad, but you know, I might want to say this part here would be uh, bold. And once again, even though you've got a style that's not bold, you can go here and you can pick bold, and that's fine. So there you go. So now we've got this a little bit. I'm going to pull this down so it rides on the bottom. And maybe I want some sort of separator here. So you have these. You have a line tool. Here's the line tool over here, okay? I'm going to draw a line right here. I'm going to go right from there. I'm going to hold my shift key down. It help makes it be straight. Ah, I went too long with it. That's okay. I can, uh, right now the line is not even there. You can see that I've drawn it. It's got a, 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 a little box on one end and a box on the other, but you can't even see it yet because it doesn't have a width yet. You do that by going to stroke. And let's go up in the stroke size. I don't know. Let's, and we can take a type here. Let's say we want to do something like a stick thin here, okay? And maybe I want it to be a little heavier than that, a little bigger than that. So there we got that. And I'm going to take the magnifying glass and I'm going to zoom in again down to here. I'm going to straighten that up. I don't want that to be hanging over. There we go. That should be right. Hit Control Zero again to go back out. And I've got a decent looking page here. I'm going to do a Control S to save. I'm saving it in my images for tutorial here, and we'll call this magazine page. And we'll say save. So now you want to see what this looks like, right? You don't, you don't want to see what all these weird lines and stuff. Let's click on this again, and there we go. Now that's kind of a strange layout, I know. But that gives you an idea of what you can do. And folks, kind of as a final thing here, lest you think that my photography is terrible, because when you zoom in these things, it looks like crap, right? If you go up here into window, th those of you that don't know this are actually a view, I guess, and you do display performance, and you do high quality display, then you get to see the full quality of the images and everything. So I'll do a control zero again, and now you can see, uh, actually, if we zoom in just a little bit on this, that this really is quite a nice looking layout. And, uh, you know, usually, typically, you don't work in that format when you're uh, just doing your layout, uh, your design and stuff, because you know that you've got a, a good looking uh, view. So typically we do use the uh, typical display, and so it's, it's, it's a lower res and it allows you to kind of pull things around. If you need to na navigate close in, you can use the hand tool, look at things. Let's go back to that high quality view for a minute. And then we could look at the pictures and stuff, and we could see how, okay, how is everything laying out? Do I like these fonts or not? You can scan it in a much larger way across the page. So there you go, folks. I hope you've enjoyed that. Peace to all who watch. Subscribe if you like. We're going to go over a bunch more stuff as far as page layout goes with Adobe InDesign CC 2015.